Um, this is a session which um, I personally think is extremely important. Uh, I'm slightly biased because I've worked on it uh, for a long time. Um, so Prem, who works at PayPal now and who's worked at Yahoo before that, is going to talk to us about inclusive design, um, which means how does one ensure that uh, different parts of your website or your entire uh, websites are accessible to everyone, regardless of their abilities or disabilities. So he's going to be talking about inclusive uh, the challenges that inclusive design poses to us as developers and designers uh, for UI widgets. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm here to talk about inclusive design challenges with UI widgets. So my name is Prem Nawaz Khan. I work for PayPal as an accessibility evangelist. So let's start the talk. So what are the things we bother about when we start developing, designing browser compatibility? What's the reason we, why we care about browser compatibility? Otherwise, quality will file a bug. Yes? IE7. So we write code like this, right? How many of you have written code like this? Star, underscore, hash, siblings, parsers, fooling the browsers, right? Or at least like this. IE5, IE6, IE7, IE8. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is the problem you mentioned. Oh, God. Sorry? Okay. We yeah, have pulled out the UFC. And this is called a situational disability. Just, yeah, just, just, yeah. So should I use this or? Uh, then I know how, how can I go? Okay. So what is the next thing we bother about? Yeah, next to. Okay. Search engines. Are these the list is complete? Or something is missing? <laughs> there are so many search engines, right? We, we do a hell lot of things to uh, make our code better, work better in the search engines. Why is that? To get ranked in the search engines, and why do we need to get ranked? To get more revenue. So, what is the next thing we care about? Responsive design. We care about a lot of devices, mobile, uh, tablet, uh, PC. Suddenly, Google will come and release uh, something in between size, and then we start writing uh, queries like this. Yes. How is it different from the IE the browser-based style sheets? It's the same, right? But do we ever care about people with disabilities? Do we? Guys? Yes, no? No. The answer is no. Why do we need to care about people with disabilities? But before we uh, talk about uh, people, uh, why do we need to care? We need to know that there are four types of main uh, uh, functional disabilities. There is also situational disability, just now I had. Uh, my presenter, wireless presenter, started uh, stopped working. And uh, functional disability is the main thing. Four main things like cognitive disability, uh, visual uh, uh, visual disability, auditory disability, and uh, uh, yeah, cognitive disability is hard of learning, like dyslexia. 
uh, visual disabilities like blindness, low vision, uh, uh, cataract or uh, uh, color blindness, and auditory disabilities, the people who can't uh, hear, you know, and uh, uh, so why do we need to care basically? Uh, sorry? Uh, that is the one reason, the policy, right? But what if your company is in India? <laughs> so it provides equal opportunity. It provides equal opportunity to the people who are disabled. For example, eBay has a partnership with the National Federation of Blind so that the people with blindness and other uh, disabled can start their own job on eBay. people do we follow among the old people category see, see we are the ones who get older soon because we are in IT industry unfortunately the way we at least I use the mouse is not the same as I, which I do it's not the same as which I'll be doing in another 10 years uh, people I mean, uh, once you get old you can't hold the mouse the same way and uh, hearts I mean hands started trembling and uh, you can't see, maybe you get uh, diabetic retinopathy and uh, uh, so, and the third thing is the search engine optimization. Uh, caring about people with disability and uh, designing a code, inclusive design code also helps search engines. You know what, Google is nothing but a blind deaf person, right? Google can read nothing but alternate text, images. So. If you think of uh, Google as a person with disability, yes. Policy. Policy, we have different policies in different countries. Like I said, India, we don't have strong policies. It's still in the papers, yet to be signed. Uh, we have in the US, we have uh, uh, American Disability Policy, ADA. We have Disability Discrimination Act in UK. We have Disability Discrimination Act in Australia. We have it in Canada. We have it in so many other countries. Uh, but still, policy is not the main thing why you need to care about uh, people with disability. Are there any disabled in this room? Just want to cross check. Are there any people with disability? Yes, no? No one? You? <laughs> yes, have eyeglasses, right? Eyeglasses again are kind of. Uh, because without eyeglass, some of you may not be able to see. So eyeglass is what? It is a kind of assistive technology. So as a developer, this should be the business case. If your code, if your design is not accessible, means it is not of good quality. We are not paid extra for uh, search engine optimization. We are not paid extra for browser compatibility. We are not paid, uh, paid extra for responsive design. So similarly, we are not paid extra for inclusive design, web accessibility. It is our main part of the job. Say if someone say, says that your code has some uh, eval function and it ha may have a poss possible excess attack, do we, don't we go and fix it? Yes, right? So it is our job to make the code accessible. So do you agree that every sh kid should have a fun like this? Yes, no? Yes, thank you. So, the way we interact with the web, even uh, it differs within us, right? Some people may, may used to use like only keyboard, geeks use only keyboard, some people only use the mouse. Old people cannot use, someone said uh, in the previous talk, they will use only a single finger. There are people with a disability who can't use uh, even that finger, they will use something with the uh, head mouse. Uh, so there are so many dis uh, assistive technologies. I'll give you an example of uh, uh, a situational disability which happened to me yesterday. I had to come, ba come to Bangalore at uh, 9 o'clock. My train was scheduled at 9 o'clock. It was late by three hours. So I came late around uh, 12 midnight. So went to the reception. There was no one the receptionist. And then uh, security was calling the receptionist. And uh, he came running. He gave me the keys. Sir, there is no one to assist you. Just go and uh, the, your room is on the right side, last room on the right side. 
So I went there. What's the first thing you will you will do when, once you get into the room? Switch on the lights, right? So you, this is the first time you are getting into the room. How do you know where the switch is? You assume, you assume, right? You because it is the standard. You consistently have been into many hotels, or, and you know that it should be somewhere behind the door. What if the engineer has put the switch somewhere in the middle of the room? You touch and feel and feel through the what you'll do. Right? So this is one kind of situational disability. And uh, how people will face this, I mean, uh, uh, t handle this situation. Some may just move around and switch on the light. Or some may go to the receptionist, even though he's not connected with the, why the switch was in the middle of the room. Will go and yell at him, right? So here the reception is what uh, customer representative for our uh, website. So people with disabled just shout to the customer representative, "Hey, your site is not working. I'm blind. I'm using a screen reader, but it's still not working." And then, still, if the customer representative is not uh, responding back, then according to the policy, they go and file a lawsuit. So how many of you know about Target.com uh, lawsuit in US? So Target.com has a physical store and also a website online. And uh, someone blind couldn't use the website. They went to the court and filed a case. Uh, it was a million dollar case. Uh, the problem was it was an, uh, a, law, a lawsuit which turned into a class A action lawsuit, which means that any blind person could be added as a partner into that uh, suit. So Target.com lost. And uh, many other famous websites are targeted, like AOL, uh, uh, e e yes. yeah, eBay. So many websites are targeted. And uh, uh, it's not because of policy. Like as I said, it's, it's because of code quality that we should uh, develop with accessible code. Yeah. So there is a com company, uh, sorry, university called WebAIM, Web Accessibility Initiative in Mind. Uh, it's a Utah-based university. They do heuristic surveys. Uh, they conducted the survey in October 2012, uh, very recently. And according to them, these are the most impactful uh, uh, problems in the order. So you have the first one is the flash content. Flash is always a problem, right? Next is the CAPTCHA. Security guys will say CAPTCHA is very important. And at times, we ourselves couldn't uh, get into the website because of the, some CAPTCHA is blocking us. CAPTCHA means confusion. Third is links or buttons do not make sense. What is that actually? Links or buttons that do not make sense. Sorry? Gives the context, yeah. Usually code, right? Code, uh, image, you put the image as a button and say click here, click here, click here, which are in the previous uh, session. And uh, you have a link, uh, you code it as a button, button code it as a link, uh, etc. And then. Uh, Fourth, the screens are parts of screen that change unexpectedly. So why is this a problem? Suddenly, the screen gets changed uh, because of single page web application. And thanks to Node.js and all the stuff. Why is this a problem to people with disability? Because people use something called as assistive technologies, right? We right now saw. It is basically a piece of software which will grab the content, parse the DOM, will uh, take the into the buffer, and will start interacting with the person. So if the page is suddenly changing, the assistive technology will not be able to grab the content. And complex or difficult forms. People love forms. Someone said, right? People love forms. So, but difficult forms is something which you don't have a proper label. I will cover in how, how to do a proper label. Because of improper labeling means you are not converting the visitor to a customer. Because forms are the ones which convert the visitor to a customer. And if you are hiding the form labels or information, means you are hiding money. So lack of keyboard accessibility. What is this all about? This is because of Web 2.0. We want to copy most of the applications on the desktop, Mac or Windows, say for example, email application or a menu or a tab into the uh, web. Unfortunately, web didn't have that kind of tags. 
it, 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 I mean, it doesn't have a menu tag, it doesn't have a menu item tag, it doesn't have a header, it doesn't have a footer. Then there came something as ARIA, which helped to achieve this keyboard uh, accessibility. Right now in HTML5, they have introduced a header tag, footer, main tag. How many of you know about main tag? It has landed in Firefox 90s. Yeah, main tag. Uh, so, missing improper headings. Again, uh, many of you may not know that the outline logic is still in the draft because you, you code uh, too many H1, H2s inside a section element. Uh, it will be difficult for a uh, screen reader user to grab through the content. Uh, complex data tables. Uh, thanks that we have not started, we have, uh, we are not coding uh, uh, layout tables. So in case you have a classic page, maybe I'll tell you how to make it accessible. Inaccessible or missing search functionality. Uh, lack of script to main content. Next slide. So a few things to know before we make our widgets accessible. So hiding content with CSS. Tab index, show focus, device handlers, ARIA attributes, and label. I'll cover one by one, yeah. So someone said the hidden, hidden attribute, right? So hidden is basically a class which you can have a visibility uh, uh, visibility block or something like that, display none, display block. And off screen is again a class where you will position the element absolutely off screen so that visual user cannot see it, but still the assistive technology can grab the content. And here is a new method for using off screen, which is clip property. You can declare clip property of one pixel and uh, uh, you can also use the height one pixel with one pixel to make sure that it is hidden for a visual user. And, but it is still available to the screen reader user. So what is the use case for this? For example, you have an input element, which according to your design, you're not able to code a label. The one way is to include a title attribute. So according to the HTML to HTML5 to uh, uh, accessibility APIs, the alt text or the, uh, I mean the title text will be converted into a label. But still you can also uh, use a label and say class equal to hidden off screen. I mean, Classical top screen, don't use hidden because that will be ignored by the assistive technologies. You can say just off screen and still the uh, label will be read by the assistive technologies and it will not be any effect to the visual user. Yes. So tab index. Tab index is another beautiful property uh, to make the keyboard, keyboard accessible widgets. Tab index had its... Uh, uh, entry in uh, even in HTML4, uh, but in XHTML it was an invalid attribute. And uh, tab index can have three values: minus one, zero, and uh, a positive integer. Minus one means you can use it on a non-semantic element like a div, span, or something like that, and still call JavaScript dot focus method to set focus on the container. So basically, you can't set the focus to a uh, elements like div, span, paragraphs, right? So here you use tab index of minus one to set focus. So uh, tab index zero is for uh, tabable, I mean, uh, for when you want to receive the tab focus, you code zero, which means that when you tab, 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 it will receive focus. And also you can use element.focus method. Positive integer. So if people wants to order the element, HTML elements, they code uh, tab index uh, 10, 20, 30, etc. So please don't do this because it will change the tabbing order and it will, the cursor will move here and there. Even handlers. We love even handlers, right? That's why we have YUI, we have jQuery, we have so many things. But what people forget mostly is we add most dependent even handlers and assume that uh, it works across the devices, but we forgot to add any uh, keyboard handlers. So events like on focus, on blur, on select, and on change are uh, in device independent even handlers. So when you use an on click on a HT anchor or an HTML input, uh, then uh, it works across devices. Uh, on most on, you know that on most out and on double click, etc., are uh, 
most dependent on on key down etc all keyboard dependent show focus always this is one of the major problem which we are seeing these days there are uh, i i'll show you what's the problem actually so this is make my trip so when it when the page loads it will be basically in the address bar you know where i am yeah you're lost so this dotted line is the actually an indicator to know that where you are exactly on the page another thing you notice that see basically this menu bar works works nicely right firefox opera alt f see i pressing i am pressing side uh, side arrow key i am pressing down arrow but that's the same say say this menu i can't receive focus so i have to use a mouse so this is the problem we copy the application to the web but we forgot to copy the keyboard interaction sorry so always show this focus dotted line never say outline none people still still some people you know uh, the one reason is because uh, qa may say that dotted line looks ugly so please avoid it or maybe because some people someone is using uh, eric mays reset.css 1.2 which he clearly defines that uh please redefine the focus it's clearly written in the comments but people forgot to define the uh, focus and and you have to fix all the web uh, just one minute you can also say button focus outline dotted one pixel so you'll always see the dotted lines Next. so what is accessible rich internet application aria this is a spec from w3c to make applications accessible the use cases in the key, uh, in the in the name itself applications like i said right we can use menu bars we can use tab controls we can use uh, outlook on web etc but we need to make sure that it exposes the semantic sugar to the accessibility apis so aria consists basically of roles uh, structure uh, role states and properties roles is further divided into widget role document structure and landmark roles next for example uh, state and properties are categorized widget attribute aria and refer hyphen pop up is just but nothing but an extra html attribute we just say do aria hyphen uh, has pop up equal to true or false means it it, it has a pop up uh, aria hyphen hidden equal to true or false means it's a hidden from the assistive technologies uh live region attributes so i said that some parts of the screen uh, uh, refreshes automatically so how do you uh, throw that content to the assistive technology use aria if on live equal to uh, true or uh, polite or off or assertive so relationship attribute is aria described by an aria controls so what is aria again aria is uh, not an uh, it doesn't uh, it passes the important information to the screen readers actually the browsers will handle the job of uh, uh, communicating this aria attributes to the accessibility apis they do the bolt uh, it doesn't change the presentation or behavior of the web page to a sighted user it doesn't makes the element focusable in it at tab index and it doesn't make the keyboard accessible labeling again you have i said uh, you have when you have a form you should have a proper label so these are the ways you can have a proper label you can have aria labeled by equal to element id aria label equal to label text and you can have the semantic label text you can have a hidden text content within the uh, html element you can have the title attribute and you can also say aria described by then point to some other element on the page to have a description of that element so i think this is aria live is polite which means this uh, the assistive technology will wait for the uh, uh, updates to complete and then it will announce to the screen reader yes 
So you have implicit uh, uh, live roles like a role alert, error message, etc. Oh, what is it like this? So accessible button. So here the first one is the element which actually looks like a button, but can't receive focus. So I had to add tab index zero. But what is missing here is the focus style. So I need to add the focus style to make it so span button focus style to redefine the focus. But still, if I click, there will be no action. Right? But if I click with the mouse, yeah, it works. So to make it work like a button, again, we need to add the keyboard handlers like a, a 13 for enter key or 32 for uh, space and uh, uh, initiate the click. So if possible, use the natural uh, element like button or uh, anchor. So accessible tooltip. So one of the problems with the Windows tooltip is you move the mouse over it, it will show the tooltip. But if you have a keyboard and it receives a focus, it will not show it. So to make it accessible, first again, you need to add tab index of 0. Or you can use an anchor tag, uh, because anchor is naturally focusable, right? You need not add tab index. And then you can add keyboard support, like uh, on mouse, or, I mean, uh, on focus, on blur, etc. And then finally, you add aria describe and role equal to tooltip. So aria describe by says that the element which will receive the focus, that is the span element, is described by this tooltip element. And this tooltip element will have the role of tooltip. Anyone didn't understand this? Questions? No? Yes? Got it? No? Hello? <laughs> yeah, next slide. So let's go to move on to a little bit complex example. How do you code a drop down in a HTML web page? Use select element, right? Use a select element. What if what if your product comes and says uh, the there should be an add button inside? It should look like a Facebook share button or something like that. So you have no other, you don't have any other option than to use uh, uh, anchor, li, ulli, etc. So this will be communicated semantically to a screen reader as a list item, ULLI, list item one of one, list item two of two, etc. It will be never known to them as a drop down. To make it like a drop down, first we need uh, add, uh, uh, since it's an anchor, I don't need to add a tab index. I just add a role of button. So when the anchor is receiving focus, it will say it is as a button. And when, since it is, has an aria has pop up, which means that it is a menu button, because it has a submenu. So it will have uh, some, uh, like a uh, Mac OS, it will say uh, menu button or pop-up button. Are you expanded set is initially set to false. This we need to dynamically manage with JavaScript. We need to set false when the uh, dropdown is open and, uh, I mean, true when the dropdown is open and false when it is closed. So are you expanded is set to false. Uh, and UL has a labeled by of uh, drop one, which means that, uh, uh, it has the, this is referred by the anchor uh, I mean, the anchor text so we need a aria role of presentation presentation roles uh, if you, if an element has a presentation role means it will be ignored by assistive technologies for example if you have a, a role of presentation to a table which has a layout table means the table will not be announced as a table so this role of presentation helps to fix the child uh, parent child relationships we need uh, only the anchor will receive the focus and not the li. So here we add the menu item role uh, to the anchors. I uh, will show you the demo later. Yeah. Next. Go ahead. So here, actually, this is a bootstrap code. I contributed to the Twitter bootstrap to make it uh, accessible, and uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, set focus. Yeah, when the menu opens. First, we will set focus as the first item. And also, the area expanded uh, property is toggled. Then we add the keyboard handler for down arrow key handling. So, so when you press down arrow, uh, it will navigate within the drop down widget. Next, I'm sorry. I'll take another five minutes. Yeah. 
Uh, another thing is when you press the escape key, it, the drop down should close like a select drop down, right? We are trying to mimic here the uh, proper uh, desktop drop down. So when you press escape key, the drop down should close and we tab out again, the drop down should close. So you add all, all these functionalities here to P equal to 27 means uh, you find the class and then at, uh, focus, set focus and uh, clear menus on the focus out. So accessible dialog. Recently, someone called Nicholas Zekas wrote a very nice article on how to create an accessible dialog. Dialogs are the most disastrous things we create on the web. Dialogs pop ups open, but there is no focus. You can't uh, tab inside. The tab, mo uh, I mean, the control moves here and there rapidly. And for assistive technology user, they are lost. Even uh, we have uh, uh, web flows inside a dialog, uh, which is pathetic. So for that, no, no. You can have the ARIA role of dialog for the uh, container. You can have the ARIA labeled by two label the dialog. You can set focus to the dialog once the dialog opens. And then you need to enforce focus within the dialog. And then again close down escape key. And when it closes, the control should travel back to the page, main page, wherever you open the dialog. So these are the things we need to take care of. Yeah. And this is the summary. But before summary, let me show you a small demo. Restarting at the open. You have an audio cable? Mm -hmm. oh. I need to plug in the audio. Oh. Problem. Is it not showing? It rebooted. Okay. External, right? Yeah. Not, not external, duplicate. Oh. Um, wow. Okay. Okay, now let's see What happened? Uh, Windows? Can you duplicate? Yeah, again. At least audio. You left right up, not inclusive design, anything else to be produced. Go to App Area Tooltips. You probably link default tooltip. Bootstrap, bootstrap, log for meta, include, include the resets by. Go to the set, the after them, like, author, and after, 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 and the area landmarks, and tab index highlighter uses bootstrap. Out of list, you probably visited link default to the to, to dot roll tooltip for three dot area described with a modal dialogue. Windows link Microsoft.com.
Optimal resolution notification. This is not the optimal screen resolution for the clone display's configuration. The Thanks optimal resolution the is 800 x 600. Click this notification for more info. Launch demo modal button. Modal heading dialog. Heading level 3 modal heading. He you is Molly's. Yes, heading level 4 tooltips in a modal. This link visited link to that link visited link. Cl save changes but modal heading dialog. See, it is enforcing the uh, uh, focus within Stop the dialog. Blank. Text this is how a modal heading dialog should link appear. Visited link tooltip. And this uh, says tooltip for a screen reader user. So I'm using something called as NVDA, non-visual desktop access, which is a free software from a blind guy from Australia. Uh, it's nice, you can just download it and use it and check how it works. If you have a Mac, just press Command F5 and the screen reader will start automatically because it has an inbuilt screen reader called VoiceOver. If you have an iPhone also, it will work. So go to settings, turn off accessibility settings and uh, VoiceOver. And uh, you can feel how the Bootstrap accessibility fixes document. Button launch drop down menu button collapsed sub menu. See, now I'm pressing the List down arrow. List with six item. One dot area has to up true and roll button for launch link. That's not working. Okay. Two dot roll button for launch. Four dot. Tab That's control. Home tab expanded select collapsed. Profile one tab expanded selected two of three. Collapsed. Profile two tab expanded selected three of three. Out of list FC mixtape wayfarers, ethical Wes Anderson tofu before they sold out McSween is organic Lomo retro fanny pack lo fi farm to table ready made. Messenger bag gentry, tab control, collapsible group item what et res et five dot up and left arrow navigates tab and down and right also navigates tab. So tab, this is how it uh three dot roll presentation for tab live. You should be able to tab to the content to read the content. So three dot five dot up and yeah, again, left I'm arrow pressing down arrow to item two tab collapsible group item three tab selected one of one. Then I press enter to expand it. Then I can read the content. 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 So if, if you see, I can just press uh, insert F7. Carrot browsing dialog pressing F bootstrap X1 boot 2 dot roll list box. Area label entry for carousel container. That's the insert key, okay. Carrot browsing dot no. Yes. Before dot up and down arrow navigate scans. So I can, I can browse with the, actually it will show a list of uh, uh, links in the dialog. It also shows the list of headings, etc. So I can skip different headings and go to that part of the uh, page directly. So if you have just click here, click here, click here, it the screen reader will say click here, click here, click here, which will not make sense to an assistive technology user. Tab one dot label for one dot label for two dot roll presentation for live and tab in there. Free running app notification no note word NVIDIA NV exit exit in MIS reboot. So there is a quick way to check if your site is accessible. You have something called as I said right WebAIM conductor on survey. So they have a toolbar Firefox add-on called Wave toolbar, and they just go and click errors features and alert. It will show the accessibility errors. It doesn't mean that does this page has only 48 accessibility errors because. This page can detect only 48 accessibility errors. No tool can detect the accessibility errors because if you're going to if you are going to code alt equal to alt or some uh, uh, some blank text, uh, tool cannot identify it. So these things don't have an alternate text. So this is a very good tool. You can check text only. You can check outline, and you can just click research page structure order so it shows the structure so when you tab this is the order which will receive focus this is a nice tool firefox add-on so maybe you should start using it for your projects this is a page 
that's it. Thank you, guys. Questions? Um, so actually, uh, I was just curious, on the Meta Refresh website, uh, when you scroll down, there's a top navigation that appears once you scroll down. How does that affect, like, how, what's your opinion on that? Is that from an accessibility point of view? It is not. If uh, you what's the best way to handle those kind of things? Yeah, if I have to handle, I will set focus to the, uh, that, that menu bar. It happens there. You can just uh, press down or at so that. Because it doesn't appear. It's still in the code. So would you say that you set access to it even when the user can't see anything on the screen? Did I? Just a minute. Let, me, let us check again. So right now you can't see that, not this, so if you scroll down a bit. This one, right? No, no, no. Uh, if you scroll down a bit with your mouse, maybe. This one. No, just scroll, scroll down. Uh, yeah, there you see better refresh yeah. about. Yeah. So what's, what's your, how would you advise is the best way to handle that for accessibility? Because I can see that being useful because it allows you to switch, you know, jump between sections on the same page. So usually you set the focus, focus to that bar. So if you see, if, if you use the mouse, right, I mean, see, one minute. So you can just click here, right? This, uh, this acts as a, uh, uh, what you call it, in internal link, see? Yeah, these so are anchor tags, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. You can just set focus to that item, and just you can press key down and press enter to activate it. So when, when you're on the top of the page, you can't see this menu? Yes. But what I mean is, would you still enable this in your, if you're using a screen reader, for example, yeah, or yeah. using a uh, tab navigation? So you need to manually set focus to that item using tab index minus one to that whole uh, bar and uh, mm -hmm. set focus there, yes. Okay, thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, one minute, just one second. Those one. So these are the designers for the designers. There's a nice infographics on what a designer should do to make their design accessible. Excuse. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I definitely like the idea of uh, making websites accessible. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to affect uh, other people. Uh, people who uh, uh, can see the page uh, with eyes. And uh, I worry about adding extra markup into the page and uh, making it uh, too slow to download. So um, actually, I came up with a solution. Um, I, I make an uh, invisible link uh, which uh, done mm, runs JavaScript, uh, blind people can uh, click this link, and it runs JavaScript and adds uh, extra markup for, for this, the page. And uh, this is uh, like a compromise. What do you think about such solution, or maybe you can uh, suggest something else? Uh, you, uh, can you repeat the question, sorry, Chris? Um, okay, uh, in order to save markup, I do not uh, add this markup for accessible website um, when the page is loading, but I can provide it uh, with an additional JavaScript. You mean a default downloading, right? You can yeah, default yeah. The then the page is already loaded. A blind person can click uh, invisible link, and uh, then uh, JavaScript runs and adds all the markup needed. Uh, what do you think about such a solution, or maybe you can uh, suggest something else? Uh, this is okay, actually, because we, we are going to default the JavaScript, we are going to load the page, and once it receives the focus, or uh, the JavaScript will, maybe you can use uh, wor worker threads to update the page and... Uh, you this can is the first link on the page uh -huh. that says, please uh, download extra things. Maybe I can see the page and suggest you. Oh, unfortunately, uh, it's uh, under development. Oh. So uh, I can just describe uh, the idea with words. But the question is, uh, how it, uh, can we uh, find a compromise between Performance ac accessible web pages and uh, a lot of markup? 
you can defer it uh, you can defer the javascript right script loader because you have something called a script loader you can say um, on the window loader you defer the script and load it you can uh, visit steve souders uh, website on how to do that you can defer the script and that script can add this markups Oh, it is okay. absolutely no problem for performance. Okay, so uh, this is your suggestion, right? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. No problem. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to make a web page accessible. How can I handle model windows? Because I've given everything, ARIA dialog and every, I've handled all the accessibility issues through that, but <coughs> content in the model window is not readable. The content in the model window is not readable. Yes, uh, the screen reader is not reading it actually. Uh, which screen reader you are using? Uh, JAWS. 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 Uh, so, uh, try to set focus to the dialogue. Okay. You, you are in you are a role of dialogue, right? Yes. And uh, sometimes what it does is, it will go to an application mode. Okay. So, I didn't cover all of the ARIA things. There is two things mainly, document and application. So, application will treat the whole thing as an application. So, don't use an application role, but use a uh, tab index of zero within that uh, uh, if it has a lot of content. So, lot of dialogues we see, we assume that it is an application, but it is not. So, it is actually a document which is part of an application. So, use an uh, uh, div id tab, I mean uh, tab index zero inside, it is a container inside that dialogue and try it. Okay. And, one and this is one of the suggestions done by Pestilla group uh, Steve Faulkner. Okay. And, and one more works. thing is, I have a header and a main. Sorry? I have a header, in a web page I have a header, navigation, uh -huh. and the content, and below the footer. Can I make the screen reader to skip the, from the header, can I make it to skip uh, content and come to footer? You have something called as landmark roles. So, you have header, right? You have, you can declare header role equal to banner. You have a main, you can also start using main tag, by the way. You can say main role equal to main, and the footer role equal to content info. So, screen reader user, for example, NVDA will press a, press insert F7, same as in JAWS, it will show a dialog with all the landmark roles. So, screen reader user can basically skip to that part of the page. Okay. Uh, it really helps. Is, uh, I'm using ARIA labeled by and ARIA described by. What is the difference and where can I use it? Where labeled by and described by. Yes. Say, imagine a, la a label, a label tag, uh, uh, label for equal to some XYZ ID input equal to type into text. So, if you are going to say input uh, type equal to text, aria labeled by equal to uh, some, way, some other element. So, this label is going to be skipped. This is very important for error messages, inline error message, etc. So, you need, you should not use aria labeled by, you should use aria described by to reference that uh, div. Or you should use aria labeled by label, uh, I mean id for that uh, label and uh, id for that the, uh, the content. Thank you. We will take one last question and the rest of the questions can please be taken offline. Yeah. Hi. Very nice talk. Um, I just had two questions actually. The first Sorry, I couldn't hear. Oh. Oh, okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, first question is what percentage of sites would you say actually are doing something for accessibility? And the second question is is there any plan in the W3C standards to have some sort of detector? to be able to detect that somebody is coming in with a, with a screen reader? Uh, no, there is no foolproof method to detect a screen reader. So, what do you need to do uh, to a website accessible? Use semantic elements. Use button for a button, anchor for anchor, select for a select here. Simple. Yeah, rest of the questions, maybe I'll take it offline or maybe Hello? tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. Uh, do you know any Indian website which is accessible? Offline, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the government sites are accessible. The Barrier Break Technology is one of the pioneers in India. It's working to work with the government. They're also trying to help the government in framing the laws, etc. And uh, they are working towards this. Last year, February, there was a tech share uh, 2012. And I think it will happen soon for 2013, uh, where there is a plan actually yeah, uh, to make all the government sites website accessible. It is in the plan. Do we have any uh, 
Accessibility Act in India? Accessibility Act is India is in still in the, that's our paper, right? I said it's in still in paper. It's, it's still not enforced. That's what I know from the last status. Yeah. So Srini, Srini is also working on that uh, law thing. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, answer. Uh, you can take a look at india.gov.in uh, when it comes to, because the uh, barrier break actually made this, and uh, they probably have a lot of, um, if you, if you want to say that, OK, they're, they're, I want to see a government site which is accessible, that's the best bet. right? And, uh, Regarding uh, the question regarding um, detecting whether uh, someone is using a screen reader or not, I think, and I'll cover this in, in my talk tomorrow, th I think that's a very, very bad approach to, to, s to see or browser sniff or do some kind of sniffing for the user agent and saying whether that user agent is you know, um, uh, a screen reader or this type of browser or that type of browser and, and showing content just for that. I think you need to, by default, make stuff accessible on your site so that no matter what the screen reader is, no matter what the browser is, they'll be able to make sense of it. I think that's the best approach, as, as well as uh, what he said, you know, um, make, uh, use semantic elements, you know, um, if it's a div, use a div, if it's a button, use a button element, you know, don't, don't abuse, um, you know, different uh, elements to make it some, something else, you know, uh, use semantic elements, use proper best uh, practices for uh, web accessibility. They're already online, just search for it, and you'll, and just by default make good stuff, and the user agents will make sense of it on their own. Thanks, Ratak. Yeah. That's it. That's it, right? Thank you.